three. It's 10 p.m. my time, so technically it's still the same Sunday. Why do I look like this? That's just the way I was born. I missed you guys. <laughs> Can you see me? Did you miss me? How come this isn't working? Oh, you might hear Cammy in the listening. She's watching Gilmore Girls in the background. <laughs> I got a spray on tan. That's why I look like this. Um, okay. So I had a long drive. Okay. That's why I, that's also why I partially why I look like this. And, um, I'm so tired. That's why I'm late. I think uh, if you guys were on Esco's live, he probably updated you a little bit already, but he went to uh, Vegas and we did a little collab with Sam and Melissa, which it was good. You guys are going to like it, I feel like. Um, we did like a women's panel kind of comparing. So we had me, Joanna, and Melissa, and we we're all like kind of comparing how it was being a woman in each different religion, right? And then Eskul, maybe I shouldn't spoil it. You guys just gotta watch it. It's actually really, it's gonna be, it's very educational, I feel like. It's a very, I was really happy with how it ended up. But, so that's why Eskul flew into Vegas. And while he was there, um, <laughs> he got to go to his first club experience, which was really fun. Um, actually, maybe, maybe I'll tell you guys a little bit more about that uh, after I go through who number 31 is. Because this is episode 31. Kelsey Kello Coffee, episode 31. Um, what was I going to say? Let me turn you guys a little bit. I feel like I do not look like myself right now. I think that because I was like so tired and I'm still so jet lagged and I feel like I look worse than I do or maybe I just look... I don't look good, and so I like put extra makeup and care, and I feel like I went overboard trying to pretend that I'm not. <laughs> trying, trying to pretend that I have my life together. That's why I also wore this little jacket, so it looks like I'm more professional than I am. <laughs> I just outed myself. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. <sighs> so I'm running off of like literally three hours of sleep right now. So... Just please bear with me. I apologize, but I made it here. We're here, 31 Sundays in a row. Um, so let's get let's get uh, to who number 31 is in the order. So number 31 in the order, he was known as uh, Edward Atwood originally, actually, but um, he left the order, so someone else got that number 31. So I, from what I'm hearing is Edward Atwood left the order because of a property dispute. That, that, this is like a reoccurring story, right? They, they, the order tries to take their property and they're like, wait, what? No. And then um, they, they have to leave because of it, right? So now number 31 has gone on to actually my dad's brother, full older brother. So Johnson, right? Number 31. So uh, I wish that I was more prepared today because I, I totally could have talked to his his kids, because I, I know some of his kids, and I could have got some more facts on on um, number thirty one, and I feel kind of bad. But maybe next week, if any of if any of his kids wants to reach out to me and give any information, um, uh, but and then I can update it next week. Or if anyone's here right now that can say more information on number thirty one, just let me know, and I'll try to be mindful of that. But num so number thirty one is my uncle, my dad's full brother, and. Um, he had, so let's see, let's count, one, two, three, he had four wives, and then one of them left him, uh, and from what I was hearing, he was pretty abusive to that one that left him, and she left and left the order, actually, it was a, it was a while ago, um, like 10 plus years ago, I was like, I don't even know if I was born when it happened, but, so, I heard from the family, and from growing up around the family, that uh, there was a lot of um, just a t it was a toxic polygamous marriage, um, and there was a lot of jealousy between the wives, the wives that ended up staying. Even um, it was very obvious that the first wife was the favorite, and the first wife, by the way, do you guys remember me talking about Supertonic? The first wife to number thirty-one um, created Supertonic, <laughs> and I actually believe in that. 
Like, I think Supertonic is very, I don't know, like, some medicinal things in the order were like, oh, that's not, that's not good. Like, comfrey, mm -mm, stay away from that. But Supertonic, I really felt like, wow, that, that would help cure my sicknesses. And even after I left the order, this is when I was, like, dumb. And I, I literally thought Yellow Card, the bad, was named after uh, the Yellow Card system in the order. <laughs> so when I left, I went to the store at Walmart, and I was looking for Supertonic. Like, like Walmart's gonna sell it, cause like that was my cult brand thinking, cause like my whole world was the cult, and then I leave and anyway, I still will say Supertonic actually was a, it's it's like it was good. It's like apple cider vinegar mixed with like um, I feel like, it was like cayenne and stuff. Really good for your immune system. But so so number thirty one's first wife was uh, the favorite. She also was like really into like mo uh, medicines, like natural remedies and stuff like that. She she actually I feel like was the one that started introducing hot and cold treatments in the order, I believe. Um, but uh, she was a very jealous woman. I, I mean, I used to think she was very like biachi to the other wives because I was like wow you did this you did that but at the end of the day like I probably would do the same things because I like you have to share your husband you know I don't know so I had heard stories that she would like leave her bra in like the the cars of the other wives or like or, or in his truck so that when the other wives would come into the truck they would see that her like just stuff like that to like kind of I don't know territory claim claim her man even though he was married to all of them, but um, that that's just stuff that I grew up hearing. That's stuff that I uh, being in the family, you know. And I feel like stuff like that happens a lot in different Plymouth families. But it was very obvious that the first wife was the favorite, and they um, they managed the Ibapa uh, farm. So I think I told you guys this story how. My grandma, Isabel, so so my dad's dad, uh, number 31's, or my dad's mom, number 31's mom, she got sent out to Ibapa, and this is what, I'm still putting the pieces together for the whole thing, but what I was hearing is when, it was around the time that all of her young daughters were getting married to their half-brothers, to like, um, uh, Ortel's sons, yeah, from the, from LaDonna. And it sounded like my grandma Isabel didn't like that that was happening and she kind of started speaking up more and then all of a sudden she gets sent to Ibapa. So she was sent out there and it's a, it's, I, I don't know if it's on Indian reservation, like Native American reservations, but it's really close to it if it isn't. And she actually got along with a lot of the natives in the area. But um, anyway, where I was going with that is after grandma uh, passed, even while she was still alive, then this number 31 and his favorite wife like moved into that house in Ibapa and they kind of like managed the the ranch out there and I'm pretty sure that's how, where a lot of the raw milk came from in the order like um, on Sundays I know that in the Mormon church they're like you can't spend money on Sundays in the order it was different it was like Sundays were when we spent money so then everyone who had like their what they created like the raw milk from the farm they would bring it on Sunday there was also a family that would make homemade ice cream and they'd bring it to the to the church and then everyone would like sell it there <laughs> and it was easy to sell because you'd just be like I'll oh, put it on my card number 60351A like you know it was like super easy to just like trade um but that is where the raw milk would come from was the Ibapa you know farm that they managed I don't think that's the only place where the raw farm raw milk came from I think it was also Washakie I could be mixing those up um David Smith says, wait, it, is that why everyone said she was half Native American? That's where I'm confused. My grandma that lived in Ibapa, um, I always thought she was half Native American. And then I did a DNA test thinking that I had a lot of Native American in me. I feel like I look Native American, no? Uh, but my DNA test came back as not no Native American. And then Cammie was like, there's no way that we're not Native American because we're... Like, they even told us, like, which lineage it came from. And so we, like, went through our ancestry and we found really far back, one of our great, 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 was, like, her name was Tatitha Cloud. And Cammy was like, I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty, like, you know, what, what, where did that name come from? So, I don't know. I don't know, David, I can't tell you, like, I, I used to, when I left the order, I believed 100%, I had at least, like, a quarter, or, like, close to a quarter Native American in me, but, I don't know, it's kind of hard sifting through it, but, um, anyway, so, sorry, the last piece of information I wanted to say about number 31 is 
that he also married one of his half sisters. Shocker, right? So I don't know why, but my dad and all of his brothers in the order married uh, at least one of their half sisters. I don't know. I feel like it was a lot bigger too back in the time. I mean, it still happens. I was in the order and and got to, got to this makes it sound like an opportunity. I was in the order and saw uh, one of Daniel's like. Daniel's daughter from one wife and his son from another wife married each other So it still happens, but I feel like back then it happened way more like like just like that my dad and his brothers uh, Paul David uh, Daniel Jesse Like they just all are like they all married half sisters super interesting um, But anyways, so yeah, that's a, a little about number 31 uh he doesn't run the Ibopaw thing anymore. It's actually one of Paul's uh one of Paul's sons that lives there now with his first wife, one of his wives, and they run it. And from what I'm hearing, they do a lot of a better job running it, and I'm sure it's because like he he like grew up his whole life doing the ranch work. I don't know. I feel like number 31 was maybe he was just getting older and it was harder for him to run the ranch by himself. He did have kids that helped, but then they would get married, and I don't know. Pumpkin Patch says he doesn't do the milk anymore. Okay, that's good to know. That's why I, I assumed not anymore because he's not over uh, Ibapa anymore. Um, he's over something else, right? Paul's uh, son is over it now. Did you want to add anything else, Pumpkin Patch? Like any, any other like details? I will let you, I, I wish that I would have um, done more research on this one, but I was just so, you guys, I am so out of it today. Because <laughs> like, so me and Eskel, I think Eskel already told you guys, we stayed up so late and then I had to drive him to the airport at 5 in the morning. I literally was like in my blanket. <laughs> But we did it. We did it. And then I had to drive here, so it was like exhausting. DNA tests from two full siblings can have different results. That's from the recessive traits. Yeah, Pamela, actually, that's that makes me I, I say this story all the time because I'm still so baffled by this. Me, Eskel, and our half brother from the first wife all took a DNA test, right? Like where you spit into the tube and send it to, I think it was like Ancestry or something like that. Also, all three of us, me, Eskel, who was my full brother, and then our half brother. And the results came back that Eskel was my cousin and that my half brother was my full brother. And I think it's because like me and my half brother have a lot of our dad's gen genetics, I guess. And me and Eskel have maybe more of our mom. But it's also, too, me and my half-brother, his mom is my mom's sister. So it's even more genetics, right? Super weird. Super. I feel like scientists need to re research this. <laughs> I, I will volunteer myself as a test subject. <sighs> as long as you find Kyle Grant for me. I'm just I just want to talk. Um, did Pumpkin Patch leave? Did they not want to say anything about number 31? Daniel Stark says, sorry, what did you say? Heck, oh heck, even if I do get married, I can't stand the thought of another woman being with my man, just know. Yeah, and that's, that's a very natural human feeling. I feel like if you, if you don't care who your person's sleeping with, you probably don't care that much about them. It's not really a loving relationship, right? So like, yeah, I totally understand why, um, Number 31, like the first wife seemed to be so dominant because think about it, if you were, if you got to be the first wife in a polygamous relationship, you got to have that, that, that like monogamous and like love and then uh, it gets ripped from you because there's a, there's the second wife coming in. I always said like if I had to live polygamy, then I would rather be a second or third wife because then you're walking into it knowing what you're getting into rather than having this loving relationship with someone and then getting him ripped from you and getting used to him seeing someone else, you know? It's like, it's like so traumatizing. Pumpkin Patch says, what do you want to know? Um, hmm, I don't know. 
You can say whatever you want to share. How old is he? Um, oh, I actually, that just reminds me. He actually was born, I remember this. He was born on leap year, so February something. And my dad would always make this joke that he, oh, I'm older than you because tech, I remember going to his 10th birthday party because if, what is it, if you're born that February 29th, then it only hits February 29th like once every like however many years. So um, that was the running joke it was that he was only 10 years old because he was born on a leap year. That's crazy. I, I can't believe I remember that. But um, I don't know how old he is. I know he's older than my dad. But yeah, if, if, just anything you want to share, like how, how old is he? Like what, 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 what key details do you think you would want to share? I don't know. I feel like for if someone asked me that about like, I'm trying to think what I would say about my dad. Um, I don't know, key points in his life, how old he was when he married his first wife, second wife, third wife. Uh, how, how old was the wife that was his sister that he married? And obviously you don't have to share anything if you don't want to. He's in his 50s, I don't know his exact age. Do you know how many kids he has? So if he has four, I guess three wives now, how many kids does he have in those three wives? Twenty four kids. That's interesting because my dad has thirty three. My dad has more kids than him. Wow. And my dad had only three wives and he had four but one left him. Um so I guess maybe he I know he had a lot of kids with the first wife. I think that the second he had less and then the third he had less. 24, you know, that's, the, that's how you know that they really make the kid, the wives have kids because it's like 24 is a very small family for three, for three wives, what? <laughs> Why are we serving 24 kids? Um, but thank you for that information. That's, that's interesting to know. 24 kids with three wives. From what I, the numbers, you only lose it if you lose standing in the cold. You can die with your number and it stays your number. Right, yes. Sorry, I know that the chat's going kind of wild right now, and I'm I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm not going to be able to keep up with the chat today. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think maybe someone was asking, like, how do you lose a number? So, uh, you can die with a number, which which uh, means that, you know, you have that place in heaven. You get to keep that number forever, and that's why I, I like to show the gravestones when, when we have someone who's passed away with a number, because it shows, usually on the gravestone, you will see the number like my grandpa who wasn't even a member till like he became senile and like and like signed the papers and then died he got the number 93 and they they put that on his like tombstone number 93 like it was a big part of his life and it really wasn't but it's a big deal to them just like when they die they put them in the garments too it's like a you you made your place in heaven i guess I hear you, Amanda. I'd rather be a spiritual wife instead of a first wife. How many leap year babies are there in the cult? Yeah, I, I, I'm glad that other people understand that. I would explain it in the order, and I feel like women always were like, I just want to know what the experience of being a first wife is like. And that's how it kind of felt like my group of friends all wanted to be the first wives. And I was like, girl, <laughs> then it's that much harder to have to deal with the polygamy. If you, like, if you don't get a taste of it, you don't know what you're missing, you know? If you're going to live like me and you have to, then might as well not even get a taste what it tastes like to be happy. <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad you understood it. Um, how many babies are born to leave your babies? There's probably a lot. I have no idea. He was actually the only one I knew of. That I can think of. Yeah. And I was like, how many does he actually spend time with? <laughs> probably zero. <laughs> if he's anything like my dad, he probably forgets his kids' names. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like Daniel, did you guys hear about when Daniel went to court to try to fight for his kids? They asked Daniel in court like how many kids he had and what the names of his kids were. And he was like, oh, and they, it was, I think they, were, they only asked with one wife, how many kids he had with the one wife. And he was like, I think it's love. if that's not proof enough that he shouldn't be a father, I don't know what it is. I get it if someone's like forgets their kid's birthday or something like that and like whatever, but like. He would spell his kids' names wrong. He would, like, forget who's who. He would just, like, it's like he didn't really care. 
if you care, you're not going to forget that stuff. If you don't, then you forget, then you forget your kids' names <laughs> because you don't care. It's so sad because it's like we are raised our whole life to be like, we love you, daddy. Uh, uh, we love you so much. And then they have your dad be like, who are you again? <laughs> and you're like, oh. <laughs> Just love me. He's like, I love you. What's your name, Sheila? Sheila Tequila. Um, sorry, hang on one second. I had some other stuff I wanted to bring up. What was I going to talk about? Are twins born in the order, Amanda? Um, yes, and I actually heard that they were trying in the order to do this treatment to induce, like, to basically create twins because, like, two babies for the price of one pregnancy, right? That's, like, growing the order even faster. <gasps> Jay Snow is here. Crystal's here. You guys. Russ is here. Russ is like, you only have 78 people on. You can keep up with that. Come on. I'm like, Russ, my vision is blurry. <laughs> Look at this bloodshot eyes. Do you think that I can see out of these? Might as well be closing them. Just kidding. I am like, literally as soon as I'm done with this live, I am going to bed. Esco says, you need a nap, girl. Yeah, no, I need to, like, hibernate for three days. Oh, that's what I was going to talk about. So we, uh, Amanda, your link to get the mugs is down. When I click on the link, it sends me to page not found. Thank you for telling me that. Why? Let me see if I can fix that right now. I think you're talking about the link down below for the mugs, right? I appreciate so much when you guys tell me these things because like I would never know like how would I know because I, I don't usually click my links down below on those I really appreciate you guys doing that for me so thank you I'm gonna fix that right now um, will you let me know if this new link works let's see link for mugs. Point. Okay, let me know if that link works or not. Um, what what she's referring to? What the, they? Sorry. Is this? It should take you to this page, and these are the mugs. If you don't know what they they are, any every mug sold is going towards the Malibu retreat for the women's retreat for the ex cult members, which is coming up really soon. And I'm really excited about it. But uh, yeah, this mug specifically, if you purchase them now, you'll get the. It's called the women's retreat mug collab by Priscilla, Cami, and Amanda. So you have Cami's tree right here. You got Priscilla's tree over here. Like they helped me design this, and this is honestly I think my favorite one that we've made so far. So. If you guys want to support the cause, if you want a mug, click the link down below. So Esco was kind of telling this story about how when we went to the club in Vegas, uh, he, he like, he got really nervous. I don't know. He seems like, sometimes he seems very social and then other times, I feel like everyone's like that. You're very social when you get into that, that mindset and then other times you're like very closed off. And I don't know what, what it is what it is about that but um i was like let's let's walk around the room let's skim the room you tell me if you see because you're a single pringle <laughs> you tell me if you see any cute cute little ladies out there and uh i'll go talk to them and i i did i did this for him before when we were in new york like i feel like it's fun for me to be like hey that's do you think he's cute yes say yes <laughs> say yes or else we're gonna be mad. We're gonna have a problem. That's my little brother. Um, so I'm like, hey, tell me, tell me who you think is cute, and I'll go up to him. He points out this girl who is wearing green. He's like, the girl in the green dress, the girl in the green dress. I want her number, I want her number. Just go ask her if she's single. Just ask her if she's single. So I'm like, okay, 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 okay. I walk over to them and I turn her around 
and definitely she's like over 40 definitely um very pretty very pretty i was like i did not know Eskel dated older, older women i don't okay we're gonna do this i was like hi um are you single and she's like yes and i point to Eskel. He's like uh, on this like pool, like uh, standing on this pool up so he can be up higher up than the crowd. I point to him and Esk is like, <laughs> I'm like, do you want that? Do you like that? Do you like what you see? And she was like, yes, yes. She like pulled her number out so fast. But I have to, I keep thinking, I'm like, it, it was dark. Maybe like they both didn't like, Esk was 24? And he looks 24, <laughs> you know? I don't know. But then he went over and talked to her, and they had a good conversation, <laughs> so... Let's go, let us know the details on that. I actually never got the details. Like, did he text her? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Did you guys like that story? <laughs> I, I thought it was funny. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. <laughs> My dad was from Hiawatha, which is now owned by the Kingstons. Oh, wow. Yeah, Hiawatha, um, there's a lot of, you know what's crazy is Hiawatha was like known for the place that, uh, that they would send order members that had a like, mouth on them. Like the order members that would talk like, that's not right. Paul needs to be, you know, the Bible said this and Paul's not doing that. Then all of a sudden they would be like, oh, we found some work for you in Hiawatha. Go up there. <laughs> that's where they would send the bad ones. My mom had a secret fling with my uncle, so one sibling may be a half-sibling cousin. I didn't find out till I was in my 40s. Santa Fe at Bay. Uh, what in the Alabama? <laughs> yeah, that's very common in New York. <laughs> that, that level of inbreeding. Priscilla's here! Hi, Priscilla! Yeah, Priscilla's with us too. It was fun. It ended a little bit, like, way later than I thought it was going to be. But yeah, we went to the roulette tables. It was fun. I was just hanging out with Priscilla. It's weird to think, like, I was just in Vegas hanging out with Priscilla this morning and now I'm far, far away. I feel like every time I leave, like, I don't want to, like, I had a good experience living in Vegas. Um, I don't think I would live in Vegas again, but every time I leave, I kind of, like, miss, like, hanging out in that house with Priscilla, and I miss, I mean, I don't know. It was a good experience living together. I think I, everything externally, I did, I don't know that I liked too much. <laughs> and the heat, oh my gosh, the heat. I think today it was like 110 degrees. Sorry, I'm gonna try to keep up with these comments. We were supposed to film a podcast episode, Priscilla. We'll do it next time. I have like so many notes too for the podcast episode. By the way, anyone who has questions for Priscilla for a podcast episode, I'm still accepting. I'm accepting questions. <laughs> Amanda, do they teach racism in the order? Also, whose last name do the kids get? So, the, the order doesn't think that they're racist, they, but they think it's normal to believe that uh, whites should only wear, marry whites. And they also, they, I remember, um, so they had this thing in Sunday school where it was like, to, to promote that you shouldn't mix your, your color, your race, they had this clear water and then this like um, like black food coloring basically, and they said that like the the analogy was basically if you put one drop of the black, it turns the whole thing black. So basically saying you can have all these. They were saying it like you have all this good and good people, and if you have the the black and it mixes them bad, and then they kind of started to relate that to why we don't mix our race, and so but they don't think that that's racist, you know. It's like saying I'm not depressed even though you are, but you just don't know you are, <laughs> you know? It, they're just unaware that that's what racism is. Um, but yeah, they definitely do preach racism. Um, they, they definitely do talk, they, I remember them talking so terrible about this woman who left the order and uh, married someone who was Hispanic. 
and they would just act like almost like she married a dog because he was not white. So it's like it's bad to leave the order and get married to a white person, but it's even worse to you know. And I always thought it was weird because I was like, they would say like, if you marry the right person on this earth, then you'll have the right family and the right kids and da da da. And I was always like, so if you marry the wrong person, what you have the wrong kids? What do you do? You just throw the baby in the trash? Like I don't understand that. The, where do these wrong kids come from? To like hell? You guys have an answer for everything. Answer that. They'd just be like, don't question. Every time my dad would get stumped on a question that I would ask, he'd be like, questioning God is a sin. I'm like, are you God? <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry, to answer your question, Calix. So she said, she, he, sorry, I, I, some of these names I don't know how to say. They said, Amanda, do they teach racism in the order to answer that? Also, whose last name do the kids get? These are good questions. So, um... I've, I think a lot of you guys already know this answer, but I, I, I think this is good to keep talking about because it's, it's kind of crazy and it's, it's, I feel like outsiders, uh, people who ha were not born in this cult, it's like, whoa, you know, like what? So my dad marries the first wife and they take the last name Johnson because that's my dad's last name and that's the first wife. So they're legally married. All the kids get the Johnson last name. My mom is the second wife. She, I don't know. I was explaining this to Sam and Melissa and I still am kind of confused fully on why they fully um, do this, but my last name's Grant. Uh, my mom legally changed, all, like had all of our last names be Grant. I don't know if her last name is Grant on her, but she's known as Lori Grant. I can say that because that's her name. She's on the show. A lot of you guys already know this information, but um, fake name, completely fake. My birth certificate says Kyle Grant. That's my father, completely fake. So it's completely illegal. <laughs> a lot of them have done that. The Snows, Chanel Snow. Uh, Snow is a fake last name because Daniel and uh, Shirley. Shirley is not the first wife, so she took the last name Snow, which is a fake name that she just she liked. I think it's cute. Chanel Snow, that's really cute. Uh, Gerald Snow, that's really cute. <laughs> but um, the father on this father slot for Chanel's dad, I think, is Stephen Snow. Fake name, fake person. Who's Steven Snow? We don't know. Where is he at? I don't know. He's got to pay some child support though. Uh, so it's very common that they will just have, so either fake names as the father or it'll say unknown. Um, and every wife after the first wife just has like a fake last name. And I remember this one girl who was like obsessed with Bradley Cooper and she changed her last name to Cooper because she was like a fifth wife. Uh, so I think it was kind of a fun thing for a lot of women to be able to like have an identity change And I also think maybe back in the day doing that change made it seem like they're they were married I don't know fully why they did that But it's made so that it would it's now harder for them to trace down the Kingston's because that like I'm Kingston But my last name is Grant, you know, there's a lot of uh, I don't know it's really that question takes a lot of depth. Sorry. There's a lot of explaining to that one, but uh, That's the gist of it and the only ones who have like the the dad's last name are the first wives But here's the crazy thing. My dad is Johnson His mom this is rare, but his mom kept her maiden name Johnson So Johnson is actually a real lineage but through his mother because his mom couldn't take the Kingston last name because she was not the first wife of Ortel Kingston. She was the sixth wife. So she kept the Johnson name. So therefore my dad had the Johnson name and therefore the first wife's kids. So that is a real direct lineage. But think of it this way. My little brother is Grant. Now he is married and now they take on that Grant name. Fake name. <laughs> but then again, like in the beginning of time, how did you have last name? It was all fake anyways. But it's really hard when you're in the group to, to know um, how you're related to certain people because the, la the, the, the weird trickery of the last name is like, we're first cousins, but your last name and your dad's last name and like, this is all fake. <laughs> it's so weird. And I remember thinking too, like, oh, you're, you're Johnson. But like, I never knew that because your mom's not, your mom's the second wife. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Crazy. Did I confuse you guys? Well, now you know how I felt my whole life growing up. 
constantly confused. <gasps> Cutthroat Pixie, you just ordered a mug? I always love when someone says that and then I go check the mug order like, ee! I'm gonna go look at it. Thank you, wow, I'm so excited. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write you a cute little letter. That's crazy for a religion believe in honesty and morality and all these things they're okay with lying oh yeah the order definitely like promoted lying and they they made it look like uh lying to the outside world it, it almost was like promoted because it was like lying in the name of the lord like we are willing to do anything to protect the kingdom of god if that means lying if it means you know Bleed, I think you've heard Gerald and Chanel talk about bleeding the beast and how like that's basically tax fraud and stuff like that as long as they're doing it for the Lord's kingdom on earth like we're so dedicated and devoted so it's like anything goes as long as the name of the Lord's like stamped on it but I think it's so funny how I was talking about this in my last podcast episode how it's like so contradicting to everything in the Bible. It's like sometimes I forget that it's even a religion, that it's actually based on the Lord and the Bible because polygamy is against the Ten Commandments because it's cheating on your wife and thou shalt not commit adultery, right? So there's that. Uh, it says in the Bible not to lay with your sisters and brothers and what, whoa, whoa. Thou shalt lay with thy sisters and brothers in the order. <laughs> like that's like a promoted thing. And then it says, um, I should have wrote a list of these because like I think about these all the time. Like there's so many times and in the Bible it says, don't trust in the arm of flesh. And literally Paul is saying, trust me over your gut, over everything else. I am the, like the law of one above another is basically anti um, the Bible because <laughs> the Bible talks about not trusting in the arm of flesh and having a direct, uh, you know, lineage to God. And then they, anyway. I talk about these things and then a lot of people think that I'm super religious because I know about the Bible, but it's really, it's because I was, the Bible was used against me and I literally had to try so hard to find out the truth because I had to sift through all these lies. So I'm not a, a very religious person actually, <laughs> uh, I, but I do believe in, I do believe in uh, Christ's teachings. I don't want to say that I know Christ like lived, but... I do like, if, if he lived or if he didn't, I don't know, but I do like the teachings of the New Testament of Christ, of how he said, like, do unto others as you would have done unto you. You know, just be a good person. He who has not sinned, cast the first stone. Like, there was a lot of good to that, and I try to live my life that way, but I don't think that you need to be Christian or go to church on Sundays to be a good person. I think a lot, I think some of the worst people I've ever met in my life, no, I know, the worst people I've ever met in my life, the most religious people because they were in the order. <sighs> anyway, I feel like so foggy right now, but I feel like we're, we're doing okay, right? Am I right? Am I wrong? Are we doing okay here? She doesn't for her safety, she has said before. What is Emma saying that to? So, oh, my, my, uh, Laptop's gonna die. I guess they don't realize that Hispanics are Native Americans. That's what's crazy is they talk about the, the 12 tribes of Israel, right? I think this is a Book of Mormon thing because I know that the LDS church talks about that a lot too. So the 12 tribes of Israel are the, the lineage and the bloodlines that need to marry each other and be together and they can't marry outside of it because they're like holier than the rest. And they claim that it says in the 12 tribes of Israel, Native American, like American Native Americans are okay, but not anyone from Mexico, not Asians, not uh, like nothing. It's so weird, you guys. Like, when you talk, when I talk to an older person, so after I left, it was like five years after I left, I was listening to them trying to be like, this is why, and it's because of the 12 tribes of Israel, and like, it, we can, we have to keep that bloodline pure, and I'm sitting there like, I, it, it, you are crazy. Like, you're caring about something that doesn't even matter. Like, the bloodline pure thing is just so, like, you're, you're saying that you should breed and base who you who you have a family off of this thing that was written in the Book of Mormon by a man 
about a tribe hundreds of years ago. <laughs> like, do you see this? And I, I had an argument with, um, so I think I brought this up before. I'm going to say it again because it bothered me so much. I was like, uh, they were like, why can't we believe in not mixing races and, and speak about that and in peace? Like, we, we should have the right to believe what we want. We should get to believe that we don't have to, we, we don't want to mix races and we want to keep whites with the whites. <laughs> and, and I should also be able to, to believe that I don't believe, like say that I don't believe in gay marriage and I believe that the marriage should be between a man and a woman or a man and a woman 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 and a woman. And, a woman. and I was like arguing and they were like, well, you guys, you guys get to say that I don't believe in polygamy and, and you guys get to do that. So why can't we say that we don't believe in gay marriage? We don't believe Because I'm not supporting racism and oppression. <laughs> I'm supporting equality and you're supporting oppression. Okay. Anyway, my head hurts now from trying to explain <laughs> the idiocracy. I've got the live stream up on my television and when my roommates ask what I'm watching, I'm like, oh, it's my friend Amanda. <laughs> happy oh that makes me so happy do you feel like these are like um our weekly like friend hangouts where you just come and like drink coffee with me and we're just like on facetime it's starting to feel more and more like that because like now when i see a lot of you guys like jay snow ooh, i know exactly who you are we've had conversations your name is jennifer <laughs> i probably know where you live <laughs> crystal we talk to like day to day eskel hmm i don't know if i know that one actually I'm barely still awake. Same! Am I dreaming? I don't know. Am I going in and out of lucid dream? Anyway. I'm trying to drink coffee to stay awake, but it's not it's not doing anything. So I'm probably gonna have to close this soon. Religion does not equal relationship with God. Say it again for the people in the back. <laughs> yes, religion does not equal a relationship with God. If you want a close relationship with God, you do not have to join a church. There's, uh, I always thought it was so interesting, uh, do you guys know who Joe Robinson is? He's my cousin, he is, he had a channel called Magic Prince John for a while, I, I haven't seen him on there in a while, but I did like a collab with him, if you want to see, um, Getting Kicked Out of a Cult is what the video was called, but we talked about how, um, he was, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I gotta go again. He was an atheist while he was in the order. Like, he just didn't believe in any of it. And he was just, he just stayed and kept the peace and pretended that he believed so that he could keep his family. It's like, I wonder how many people do that. Just, and a lot of people even um, are gay and they get married and have kids in the, in the order and they come out, there's been a few that have come out later like, look, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> That's why they need conversion therapy. It's like the order's like living in the past. Someone asked where you live, Amanda, and that's why I said it's nobody's business. Aw, thank you, Emma. I love that a lot of you guys understand that. And that's the thing is, I get that, like, a lot of YouTubers like to say, like, exactly where they live, and it's not a big deal. And I mean, maybe it's not that big of a deal, but I just don't like order members who uh, do not like me, who have threatened me who have malicious intent against me. I just don't want my information to be readily available for those people. It's not that I don't trust you guys. You guys are cool. <laughs> I like your necklace. What kind of charm is on it? Oh, thank you, Jenny. So, I actually got this for Christmas. Uh, this is the type of person I am when it comes to like jewelry. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. I'll like uh, sleep with my jewelry on. And so I have literally not taken this off since Christmas. Um, me and Cammy have the same one. Can you see it? It's supposed to be my like birth flower. But it's a pretty sturdy, sturdy necklace if it's been able to withstand me for six months. I can't even stand myself for that long. <laughs> I look so tired. Ah, I am. 
It's funny that that one person has now gone quiet and never seen them before. What one person? Oh, the one asking where I live. What? Weird. You got us, Eskul. And Chris was like, power through, Eskul, stay awake. <laughs> stay awake. If I have to do it, you have to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Heather says, I've been a fan of Amanda since Skin Believe Me. I watched almost every Sunday and YouTube upload. I just don't usually comment. I think it's cool. She moves around so much, so I was just curious. Yeah, I think I've had conversations with you, Heather. I love your last name. It makes me think of coffee creamer. Um, yeah, I don't think it's an intrusive question, though, to ask, like, where you live. Because I, I ask that, and I, I think it's interesting to see, like, when someone's moving from place to place, but I didn't even like talk about living in Vegas till I was like moving out of Vegas because, um, I don't know, it freaked me out a little bit. The fact that, okay, okay, I'm gonna tell you what really freaked me out. One day I was shopping at Smith's that was like the one that was the closest to my house in Vegas and I was waiting in the line and I saw this kid from the corner of my eye and I was like, I can't help but feel like he is an older person. And it's so weird, I feel like, even though I've been out of the order for nine years, it's almost like I have like this sixth sense sometimes when it comes to that. Like I just like, they have an order demeanor. Like they just do. They just do. So I got closer to him and he was really tall and I was like, oh my gosh, that's Daniel's kid. He is a Daniel's kid. And it freaked me out because I didn't know if he was in the order or out of the order or why was he at the Smiths by my house, you know? And it's like, at the end of the day, I think I even talked to him about this later. He was just there on a vacation. But it freaked me out to think that, you know, I just get like, what? you know, I shouldn't though. Because especially like there's, there's people who are out of the order that I didn't even know left. And he, he very well could have been that, you know, I think that I just get this paranoia, especially because I was like harassed so much when I left you guys, people were so mean to me. And I had like, one of the ones that just burned in the back of my brain was someone, someone that I cared about. And I like, like, I thought that they really cared about me too, was telling me that, um, like, it's a good thing that I left the order and, uh, couldn't bring anyone else to hell with me. And people were like wishing me just ill, ill wishes. Uh, so it always makes me like, sometimes I'm out for so long that I forget how malicious they are. And then, I'll, and then I'll get like harassed again by them. I'm like, mm hmm you're the same, you're, nothing's changed. But it's like, I just don't want PP, PP, I don't want PP. I don't want people to have easy access to me when they want to hurt me. Same with my mom, how I put that boundary up. Like, I, you can't get, you don't get to have super easy access to me when you're me, okay? Escaping <sighs> pulling me. Tell me uh, when I was like 14. I feel like you guys, the chat has become everyone just talking to each other because I keep yapping so long. Emily, by the way, congratulations on winning the, uh, if you guys watched Esco's live stream just before this, he um, did a, uh, like a surprise winner, what do you call it, a drawing? Anyway, Emily won the, um, you guys, <laughs> the candle. Congratulations, Emily. Res non verba. Thank you for the donation. It says, so proud of you. You inspire me to be brave and stand up to systematic abuse in my circle. You're amazing. Thank you. That is honestly, those are the best comments. Those are my favorite like compliments is when someone says that, because I think of it as the way that I looked up to Jessica and Chanel and Colleen these people that they didn't even realize how much they were influencing me and a part of my journey just by existing and like fighting for what they believed in it caught it, it was like this ripple effect and it, sorry i'm like gonna tear up because it makes me so happy that i can kind of be that for someone else you know so thank you it makes me wonder how, how, you know, how big the ripple happens. And um, I was thinking about that today on my long drive was like, man, all of these people who inspired me without even realizing that they were inspiring me 
are a big part of why I'm where I am today. It's kind of, it, I think it's a good thing to look at who are your role models and why, you know? Anyway, that was nice. Rochelle is here. Where is Rochelle? Where is she? Fell asleep and woke up at 2 a.m. and we're live. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. I So I was, um, I was like, I hope I go live before like the days over on the East Coast. I think I barely, what, what, I think I started at midnight East Coast time. Thanks guys. Definitely understand not everyone has good intentions. Amanda's safety is always most important. Oh, thank you. I love how much you guys understand. You guys are so sweet. Dominic says, Amanda, the order is toxic like Britney Spears toxic. <laughs> toxic. Hi, I recently watched all of Escape and Polygamy and your YouTube videos. It has been crazy learning about the order. I have an abusive family and I relate. Thank you for sharing your story. Aww. It's interesting to hear people like recently are watching Escape and Polygamy because it's, it's been a few years since we filmed, you know? But I think it it's, it's one of those shows that like there's really nothing like it other than now that the documentaries are coming out like keep sweet pray and obey and those things but i still haven't seen something quite like escape and me where you're you're keep getting the inside scoop and then watching them transition you know this is a very interesting show even when i would watch it and be like this is interesting <laughs> why do i look like that on there that's when i started like you know there's nothing like, uh, you don't pick yourself apart. Like, I've never picked myself apart more than when I started being on a TV show. Like, watching yourself on TV is, like, scary. It's, like, almost unhealthy for your mental health. Because <laughs> you, you, it's like, oh, wow, the whole world just saw me like that. And, um, I didn't know I looked like that from the back, you know? <laughs> Could have went the rest of my life not knowing that. You're strong-willed for sure. Thank you, Emma. Dee Dee's here. I know that you may not know or want to talk about it, but did you guys ever find out who the insider for the show was? I get this question a lot, and um, uh, from what I'm hearing, the insider was... Uh, who said this? I'm pretty sure it was a mixture of multiple people, but there was one main person who the insider was. Like, the information was coming from multiple people, is what I'm saying. But the main insider, the one where, like, we were trying to help the insider escape, that one, I'm hearing, is still there, so we can't, like, talk about who they are, just for protection. And I almost feel like the more we talk about it, the more people watch it, and, like, I kind of don't mind talking about it. <laughs> but I get the, the, like, curiosity. Even, like, with my marriage, people were so curious about that. I'm like, I'm divorced. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Esco's melting. I am going to let you guys go so that we can go to bed. I'm glad that I got to say hi to you, Rochelle, though. <laughs> it's very end that you showed up, but you showed up. We all showed up. 31 Sundays, you guys. It's starting to feel like crazy that it's probably going to be a year pretty soon that we've hung out every Sunday. That's weird. Like, not, it's not weird, but it's like, it feels weird that it's been 31 Sundays. It's kind of cool. I, before we close with prayer, I would just like to say that, I was saying this to Emily actually earlier, I just really appreciate how loving you guys have been, and you're so loving to each other, and it's been such a healthy community for all of us. I think that's why it's been able to be consistently every Sunday, because everyone's excited to show up and talk to each other, and like, you guys have created such a happy, healthy little community, and it's awesome. It's awesome. Crystal says, just come talk to me, and I'll tell you how amazing you are. Ah, we are our own worst critics. It's so true. And that's something, too, that I, I would like to leave on a positive note to try to. This is one thing I've been working on uh, this whole week and last week in my diary entries, just trying to, to self-reflect and make sure that the way that I'm talking to myself is positive and not negative. And I've, I've been giving that advice to everyone because I feel like that's something that's so easy, so easy to slip into that negative talk about yourself and then slip into this spiral. 
and we need to just catch it and be aware of it so that we can turn it around and make it positive so that we can live a positive life based on positive feelings and decisions rather than a negative life based on negative feelings and decisions, you know? Because, like, I think I talked about this in my podcast with Jessica, how there's one person who can be, like, you know, two different people. One, Both of them have the same goal. They both wake up at the same time. This one's like, I failed at my goals yesterday. I'm probably going to fail today. Good luck today. Um... I'm a piece of trash. I'm a loser. <laughs> Whatever. Good luck with today. And then there's this person that's like, oh, you know, you tried your best yesterday. We're going to try harder today. Good good job on all this, this, and this, and this. You, uh, you need to do better work on these, 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 and these. Um, let's go. You know? <laughs> productive. That's more productive. Who do you think is going to get to the goal faster, you know? I've been both people. And I can tell you in each scenario... So I, I do better when I'm patting myself on the back more rather than just beating myself up. <laughs> but I think that I was like kind of raised in that kind of talk where everyone's talking at me like saying, oh, why? Why'd you do that? Da, da, da. So then I started talking to myself that way. But yeah, I love this Kofi fam. And we said, oh, I do too. I think that we've, we've all created such a happy, healthy little community. And I think that... I even am starting to see growth in each of you. As I, I know that I've been growing these past few months and I, and I get to watch my videos and watch my growth and I see it in you guys as well, which is so cool. And that you guys support each other in that growth. I always feel so good after these lives, such a good vibe. Yay! <laughs> eh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Cutthroat Pixie, I'm gonna get to your uh, letter today or tomorrow, I'm gonna go to bed. Right after this, literally, camera's going off. I'm going out. But thank you guys for showing up for 31 Sundays. Thank you guys for being my little Kofi crew. Oh, sounds like Jay Snow is doing the closing prayer. Dear God, grant to us the serenity of mind to accept that which cannot be changed, courage to change that which can be changed, and wisdom to know the one from the other. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, that's actually really cute. I thought it was going to be a joking prayer because that's sorry. That's why I was like, dear God. <laughs> um, anyway. Love you, Jason. No, that was sweet. I, I love that. I, I like also focusing on... Not focusing so much on the things you can't change, because you can't change those things, but focusing on the things that you have control over. That's more, um, I mean, you can do something about that. You can't do something about the things you can't change. Hugs from Munich, Germany. Love your channel, watching from the beginning. It's 8 a.m., heading to work now. Aw, thank you. Wow, Germany. I want to go to Germany. Hey, Amanda, when are you coming to Malibu? Me, Cammy wanted to go watch the Dodgers play the enemy. Tell me on here. Um, yeah, we're going. We're gonna be in Malibu in August. It's coming up, and my birthday's in August too. Virgo. Okay, I'm gonna go, you guys. <laughs> I feel like I've embarrassed myself enough for one night. Oh, I brought these here because I'm gonna show you guys before I go. Have you guys ever seen these? I saw these at um Whole Foods. They're like mushrooms that are dry, but they're like sweet. They're like that. Shiitake mushrooms. That's all. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the show. <laughs> See you guys next Sunday on the Cold Day Cup of Coffee, episode 32. And I'm coming out with another episode of the podcast. It's an episode with me and Eskel this week, so stay tuned. Love you guys.